drama. Amen. We've just got to be ready to roll with the punches when they come to us. We give God praise. And I do want to honor Apostle Yemi, who's here with us. We don't take it for granted at all. At all. He's my brother and my big brother and a father and all, all of the above. And we do honor you. We don't take it for granted that you're here with us. We, we do give honor to the father of our house, Pastor Fifi, who is actually in the virtual church today. Hi, Pastor Fee. I told him today he's going to have a, a, a taste of what it's like to be frantically responding. Um, Mami, see, I'll let you know I told him to hit the heart ten times, ten times, all at once. But we do give God honor. We don't take these things for granted, for the service, for, for the things that we all do. And, and today I do want to honor Jesse. I, I really do want to honor my son, Jesse. And, and for those of you who might who might worry that we talk about him too much. Don't worry, he likes trending. He, he'd be happy if I gave you his YouTube address right now so y'all can follow him. He's trying to tell me that right now. Um, but I, I wanna challenge us, and, it's, and this too is a testimony. Because for any of us who have been in person, we can testify that we've watched that boy grow. We have watched that boy mature and, and take on an identity that has been profound. And, and so I want to challenge all of us and all of us who are bringing our children, bring your children, let them serve, they will grow. And the child grew. That's the end game. A child grew and became strong in spirit. That's where we want to land in all of this as we talk about the family. And today we're going to round up that teaching on raising a godly seed. Uh, and, and so we'll see where the Lord will take us with that. Um, but I do want to remind us that in the coming month, like Minister Yvonne said, before you take your seats, we're coming into the season of Thanksgiving. And so in the month of November, our theme is Thanksgiving and testimony. And a dut means testimony, witness. We are going to be witnesses of the faithfulness of God. That means we're going to see something. <laughs> we're going to experience a thing or two. And we will testify of his goodness in prayer. We will testify of his goodness in the land. Amen. We will speak of the mercies of God. So be on the lookout for that. That weekend before Thanksgiving will be our Edut gathering. We're looking forward to it. We know the Lord is going to do an amazing thing in our midst. So, Father, we honor you. Father, we bless your name. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence even here. And as we get into the word of God, bring revelation, bring understanding, bring healing, bring transformation in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. Amen. You may be seated in heavenly places. So, so in this month of October, we, we've been talking about raising a godly seed and family. And, you know, I've listened to most of the messages in the, these last two days. I've just kind of gone back. And, and so for those of you who are in person or not, I encourage you to get back on Facebook and on YouTube and, and get those messages back in your spirit. I just want to summarize a, a few things because it will be pertinent to what we're going to talk about today as we try to tie it all together. So uh, Apostle Yemi, who was with us several weeks ago, talked about the kingdom family. And, and one of the, the statements he made at the beginning was, what does God's home look like? What does God's home look like? And, and then he talked about the kingdom age versus the church age and, and established pretty much that the age we're in is the age for the manifestation of the sons of God. Yes, I'm a son. Even with those of us with X chromosomes, we get to be sons prophetically. Amen? And, and, and it is a time for us to manifest. And manifesting doesn't mean we came to church. Manifesting is way beyond that. Manifesting is where we're living out our godly calling. Manifesting is where everything around us testifies, Satan included, that that's a child of God. Can't go there. <laughs> Can't touch that one. Not today. Manifesting means that we're taking the kingdoms of the world and taking them over for God. So, so for me, that also means things that are supposedly taboo. Yeah, Vasha, you're going to need to get there. Uh, we, we, you're going to might need to stay up there for a minute. Things that are supposedly taboo, we take them over and make them holy. Because of our stand, because of our posture, because of who we are. We take the world from secular to sacred. 
And we do that in every sphere. We bring the counsel of God into the various spheres that we're in. I'll give you a very real and practical example. So, so we talk about some of the mountains, education. Let's use education because we use this scripture quite a bit in this past month. The scripture of Proverbs 22, 6, that says, train up a, a child in the way he should go. When he's old, he will not depart from it. And you remember that the Amplified Version uh, adds a little bit there and talks about training up a child in the way he should go and in keeping with his individual gifts or bent. So in my career, one of the things I'm working on now is something called an individualized curriculum. Ain't that scripture? Didn't we just read that? And we've gone on and on and on where we've had a social context for education when scripture years and years ago was teaching us it's supposed to be individualized. We were never supposed to put 30 kids in a classroom and teach them all the same way and expect them all to do just fine. It doesn't work that way because there's an individual approach to education. Somebody say individual approach. And so when we people of God get into education with that understanding, then we can begin to build individualized approaches to education according to the patterns of God. Because that's what the word says. We were never meant to conform to the world. The world is supposed to conform to the spiritual mandate according to the word of God. It's all in the Bible. Somebody say, it's all in the Bible. It's all in the Bible. Don't let anybody convince you the Bible is old-fashioned. It's all right there. If only we would read it and understand it and interpret it. Our problem is we're interpreting it wrong. And we'll talk about that in just a minute. And so the same thing, you bring the counsel of God, Minister Yvonne, concerning finance. We can't just sit in the worldly mortgage system, in the worldly systems of financial operations and credits that we all know is so evil. And we just function in it when there's a spiritual mandate concerning finance that we're supposed to understand in the word of God and then interpret it on earth. Oh yeah, I'm waiting for the real Christian bank to show up. The real Christian systems of credit and operation to show up at the national level because the sons of God finally arose and said, "Uh uh-uh, that's wrong, this is right. And we're going to do it God's way. Somebody say amen. The same for health care. The same for law and order. We are struggling as a nation in terms of our police forces and change and all that. But if we could understand the mandate about law and order, then maybe, just maybe, just maybe things would be the right way. And we wouldn't be struggling. All right? And, and Apostle Yemi also said something interesting. He threw it in there, but it's so pertinent. I hope you caught it. He, he made an analogy of himself as more of a theorist and Pastor Fee as more of a practical teacher. It's pertinent. We'll talk about that, but keep that in the back of your mind as well. So thank you, Apostle Yemi, for bringing that dimension to us. And, and in keeping with that, in keeping with the theory that he gave us, the very next week, Pastor Fee came with a practical And the message was all aboard. Do you guys remember that? And in that message, Pastor Fee talked about how for 37 years, Moses was trained in Egypt to become an oppressor. But his mother had him for three years. And in those three years, she made him into a deliverer. And those three years stood up against the 37 years in his adulthood. Those three years testified against the 37, and he could not become an oppressor no matter what they did to him because his mother and his father and his brother and his sister, everyone was on board making sure this child, this fine child, understood you are not an oppressor, you're a deliverer. All aboard. What are we talking about? He talked about training and how every part of the body must supply that training. Every joint must supply. There's an element of me that will never come into fruition if Kaylee is not manifesting in her joint, if Zainabu is not manifesting in her joint, if Benita is not manifesting in her joint. The elements of growth, Bianca, that you will never come into if Yvonne isn't manifesting in the fullness of her joints. Every joint must supply. The theory must supply. And the practical must supply. Come on. The adults must supply. And the children must supply. I'll take it further. The blacks must supply. And the whites must supply. Every joint. Every joint. Every joint needs to supply. Why? Because the child must grow. End game. The child grew. Come on. The whole family. The whole house. 
the real house must manifest. Every son walking in the fullness of their calling. Every believer functioning. Nobody's uh, uh, functionless. Nobody's going through and under circumstances all the time. So you can't be who God has called you to be. Somebody say, I'm tired of that. I'm tired of that. How long are we going to be under circumstances when we're called to be over them and above them and to function at a higher level because we have a kingdom to take over? We have mountains to secure and take from secular into sacred. Somebody say, I'm not going to conform. I am not going to conform. I am not going to conform. We need the male expressions of God, and we need the female expressions and dimensions of God. Every joint must supply. So uh, I'll get practical and real. Sometimes y'all you, you, you will, will appreciate this. I even look at Pastor Fee and I. So different, but every joint must supply. For a house of worship to function, every joint. He must supply, I must supply. The day I sit back, ah, the body will suffer. The day he sits back, the body will suffer. Every single joint must supply because the child must grow. And, and then the last one I'm going to hit before we just go into today's passage was the, the, the family redeemer, the kingsman redeemer. Remember that message that Pastor Fee brought forth con concerning Boaz and, and how to redeem the family? It, it has to be a close relative. Come on. <laughs> it's not going to come from far away. It's right in the house. It's right in the house. It's right in the house. Talk about his house. Talk about a building. It's right in the house. Every need, everything that is necessary for our going forward, everything that's needed for us to pull through, it's in the house a close relative, a willing relative. Remember that? <laughs> a willing relative and someone with ability. I can't wait till I can write a million dollar check. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to it. Some of you just want money for the sake of money. I want money. L listen, Pastor Vashti, one day just steal my journal. I, have, I probably have about 30 journals over my life. Every single one of them, somewhere there's a list. Too. Let me say like African. There's a list that when I get the money, the people I will give. <laughs> there is a list in there. I am eager to give. I am eager to bless. To do that, though, you need ability. Somebody say, God, give me ability. Give me ability. Let the redeemers arise in the name of Jesus. So today, let's round it up, all right? And then we're going to go into Thanksgiving next, next week. So in Luke chapter 2, the passage, uh, our... Minister Kalia read so eloquently, is that story about Jesus being brought to the temple for his dedication. And, and, and you see that picture of Simeon and Anna coming up to bless the baby and to prophesy to his mother. And you see so many dimensions in this passage of scripture. We're not going to go through all of them. So your spirit is going to have to be awake and alive because I'm going to give you some points and you, yeah, I'm going to give you homework today. That's the kind of pastor I am. <laughs> I'm going to give you some points. I'm not going to go in depth and I want to challenge you to take it further. Or like Apostle Yemi would say, go a little bit deeper. He'll do it for you. I ain't going deeper for you and all of them. You're going to have to go deeper on your own. Let me tell you something. Some of my best messages happen when I'm sitting in church. Because, see, see, we were never meant to spoon feed everything to the body of Christ. We just need to gather and be in an atmosphere where the Spirit of God is, and each of us ought to be catching different dimensions. Come on, it was never meant to be this hierarchy where the Word is only here. Uh-uh, uh-uh, the Word ought to be coming from you. Every minute of this gathering, the Spirit of the Lord is eager to release a secret to somebody. Huh. Can you imagine, Eileen, can you imagine right here, right now, God dropping a secret about hair? Boom. That's the kind of God we serve. Because if he wants us to take the kingdoms of this earth, then that means there's secrets in this earth that he wants to reveal to you and me. He's not going to give me the hair secret because, you know, I don't... <laughs> Fashion, Benita's going to come to you. It's not going to come to me. Vashti makeup, that's your arena. You know I don't know what I'm doing. 
There are dimensions and secrets that the Holy Spirit is looking to deposit in us. But we've got to be in that readiness. We've got to have a ready ear. So right here in the house of God, right here on Sunday when we gather, never just come to, to just sit and let another human being fill you. Don't be satisfied just to be filled by the flesh. Be satisfied when you're filled by the Spirit of God. And Spirit of the Lord, even right now, in the name of Jesus, begin to speak to your people. Even right now, begin to drop solutions. As we get ready to go to work, some of us going back to work today or on Monday or going to school, whatever our circumstance or our situation, God, can you begin to pour out, out of the abundance of your wisdom, out of the abundance of your knowledge, give us solutions, give us solutions, give us answers for the issues that we're dealing with, give us the answer for the boardroom, give us the answer for the company, Give us the answer for what needs to come. Amen. So be aware and be ready. Have your pen ready. So, so, so we see a number of different things. I'm not going to read the whole passage again, and I hope that it, it, it's in front of you as we talk and as we engage. There are a couple of things. Number one, there was an angel for the family. Remember, the angel earlier on had, had, had revealed to them the name of the child. And so the passage made, makes reference to the fact that Jesus was given that name according to the instruction of the angel. There's an angel for your family. May that angel be busy about the business of the Lord. Amen. Number two, uh, in verse 22, you see there where Mary and Jesus were brought forth for purification. There's a purification of the family. We'll talk about that one a little bit more. And in that same verse, that's where it mentions that Jesus is being dedicated. So there is a dedication for your family. Okay? There's an angel for your family. There's a purification of your family. There's a dedication of your family. There's something that dropped that, ooh, I just loved it so much, and I can't wait to dig further in that one. We are introduced to Simeon in verse 25. My mercy, we were having this conversation about intercessors and watchmen. Guess what? Simeon was the intercessor for the family. This was the one who had waited on God, was waiting for the consolation of Israel, remember? And had been in that temple, was called to go to that temple right at that time and saw Jesus and then says to the Lord, I can go now in peace. There is an intercessor which is like commensurate with a pastor for the family an intercessor or pastor for your family. And then we also meet Anna, the prophetess. There is a watchman, a prophet for your family as well. And don't think of these things as external things. You just might be it. <laughs> Come on. There's an intercessor for the family, the pastor, and there is a watchman, the prophet for the family. And, and then we see in verse 34 that there are prophecies concerning your family and your seed. Your seed is not just your child. Your seed is your output. What comes out of you, what you birth. There are prophecies concerning your career. There are prophecies concerning your business. There are things God wants you to do in planet Earth. There are prophecies about those things. Amen? So we've touched on the angel, the purification, the dedication, the intercessor pastor, the watchman prophet, and the prophecies of your family. You look in verse 35, there's something we don't want to hear, but there's the pain of the family. And sometimes that pain is prophetic. You're not just going through for going through sake because Cousin Johnny just did it again. <laughs> Every family has a Cousin Johnny and a Cousin Sue. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> there is a pain that comes with family, and there are prophetic pains that come from the family as well. Hmm. Verse 38, there are timings of your family. Remember, she came up right at that time. There are timings for your family. There is a residence for your family. They went back up to Galilee. That's where they were called to be. Where are you called to be as a family? All too often, we pitch our tents near where we work. When will we pitch our tents near the house of God? There is a residence for your family. You see here that Joseph and Mary obeyed the law. Everything that they were supposed to do according to the law. There is a law over your family. There is a law of God, a law of righteousness. There are godly requirements for you and your family. 
What are they? How will we find them? When will we obey those laws concerning our family? Number 11, <laughs> there are obediences of your family. We'll talk about that one too. You see that in verse 39 where it says they obeyed everything. They did everything they were supposed to do. And after all of that, then comes that verse 40, which is our number 12. And the child grew. The child grew. The child grew. So I'm just going to pick up three of these. We'll tie it up and we'll go home. How's about, how about that? We'll go home and live out our prophetic agenda. So, so, so the first one that I want to pick up is the purification of your family. So you see that in that verse 22 that talks about how um, Mary had reached that time and she had to come up before the Lord. I'm going to go back to that and read it and then flip back over there. It says in that verse 22 of Luke chapter 2. I'll start from 21. At the end of eight days, when the baby was to be circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Verse 22. And when the time of their purification, I'm reading the Amplified, the mother's purification and the baby's dedication. When it came according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. Now, I, I went back a bit there in, in looking at the law in Leviticus and, and trying to really get into the mind of God, into the heart of God about this issue of purification. Because if you're like me, when I hear purification, the first thing I think is what I do wrong. Okay, am I the only person like that? We usually equate purification or unholiness with somebody's judging me. Somebody's accusing me of something. They don't like me. And, and this scripture kind of doesn't help. <laughs> Come on, be with me. Stay with me on this one. Okay? Because I'm looking at this. I'm like, all she did is have a baby. Why, why, why is she unclean? What'd she do wrong? And, and so that scripture in Leviticus, it talks about how if a woman conceives and bears a male child, she shall be unclean seven days. Unclean as during her monthly discomfort. Didn't you like that word, discomfort? <laughs> and on the eighth day, the child shall be circumcised. Then she shall remain separated 33 days to be purified from her loss of blood. Take note of that. She shall touch no hallowed thing, nor come into the court of the sanctuary until the days of her purifying are over. I'm like, God, what is this? I don't get it. I don't understand it. What's the big deal here? What's the issue here? Why would she have to wait out 33 days for a boy 66 if you go further? If it's a girl, I'm like, Lord, what's wrong? What did we do wrong? Why does that make us unclean? Why, why, why does that warrant this isolation? Sometimes that when you have to isolate or quarantine, that means something wrong with you. Right? Yeah, that, that's what we, we've come to understand. And so we look at these things, and sometimes it, it causes us to not catch the essence of what God is really saying and doing, uh, especially with the Old Testament. A lot of the things in the Old Testament are symbols and types that are then revealed in the New. And so I'm asking God, what does this mean? And y'all are going to laugh when you, you hear how I, I finally pieced it together. But, uh, you know, I'll just use the example, okay? Because it will help you see what I'm saying. This was not about something she had done. It was about the loss of blood. What does blood represent? Life. Life. It was about two things. The loss of blood was one, but that was even the minor issue. Their major issue was come be with me, daughter. Separate yourself with me. Be with me. So I'm pondering over all of this. And, and what the Lord reminded me of was the loss of life. The loss 
of life. So, so Chelsea, what, what I started thinking about, have you seen the movie Jumanji? No? Okay. I saw it. <laughs> Who's seen the movie Jumanji? Come on, tell the truth in the house of God. Thank you, Lisa. Okay, so I, I'm talking to Jason. I'm like, Jason, explain something to me because I, I think I'm catching it. I'm starting to understand it. If you remember in that movie, they had a certain number of lives. They had a certain number of lives. And any time they were attacked or wounded or injured, they lost a life. And I asked another question. I said, could they do anything to get the life back? And it's like, nope. Somebody say, not God. Not God. See, see, now let's bring it back to Leviticus and what all of this means. We all go through things, and things happen to us that cause us to lose some of our life. We all have experiences that draw the life out of us. Some of you have people who suck the life out of you. And God was saying here, listen, when you're in that state, you're not whole. See, purity doesn't have to do with there's something wrong with you, go away. It has to do with God saying, I want you whole. I love you. I want you to be everything I have called you to be. I want you to manifest. And I want you to be full and happy and full of me. So listen, come be with me. Spend 33 days with me because I'm not like that movie. I will fill you up again. I will give your life back to you, and even better than it was before. Hallelujah. There are all kinds of things. Don't think too far. Don't think too far. Sin is just the easy one that we all want to hamper on. We spend so much time pointing people's sin out to them when we ought to be pointing out to them God wants to love you. The message ought to be not you're dirty, you messed up, you sinned. No, the message ought to be God loves you. And God just wants to refuel you and help you and charge you. That ought to be where we park it, people of God. I'm not saying don't call out sin, but I'm saying that the voice of love has got to be louder. Because when it's said and done, this is about what God wants to do with his children. So sin is the easy one. But have you ever thought about fatigue? Oh, let's tell the truth right now. I don't know about you, but I get so tired. I'm drained. I'm no good. I might be up here ministering, but I ought to be in 33-day isolation. Tell the truth. Come on. God wants us whole. Whole. Sometimes we have things, distractions even, that suck life out of us. <laughs> Apostle Yemi, we preach, and life is sucked out of us. Sometimes those are our most vulnerable moments. When you've emptied out. And that's when God is saying, mm, you lost a life. Come here, girl. Come here, son. <laughs> Be with me. Spend some time with me. Let's go into isolation, not because I don't want to touch you, but it's the exact opposite. I do want to touch you. You don't need to try to touch me. I want to touch you. Come on. Come on. Disobedience. That's an easy one. That sucks the life out of us. And God is saying, Isolate yourself with me. I want to renew you. I want to restore you. I want to touch you. And, and so the other part of all of this is we have opportunities, even today. It's an opportunity to wait on God, an opportunity to be refilled, to be retooled. But just like you, many of us today, those of us who are in person, we get in here, we're working, we're filling this, we're doing that, we're running here, we're in there. We're exhausted sitting here. We're not listening. Our minds aren't ready. We're, we're so ready to sing a song and it has to come out right. I can't mess up, but God wants to mess you up today. God wants to fill you today, but all of a sudden he can't because we've got to have it all together because we're on camera. I don't care about the camera no more. We've got to be who God wants us to be. We've got to experience everything that God wants to pour into us because he loves us. He loves us. He wants to manifest his greatness through you and I. He's not looking to destroy us. He's looking to build us up. He's looking to show us off as a great and glorious church. Amen? 
So, 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 so stop coming to church to wait on me for a message. Wait on God. Come on. Don't come to church waiting, waiting for, for, for that song to drop. No, come wait on God. Come on. Your isolation is not with the pastor. It's with God. It's with God. It's with God. It's with God. Come on. We talk about, you know, we, Pastor Yemi said, Apostle Yemi said, don't play church. Yeah, that's playing church. When we just come and do and go and come and do and go and we're just tired and broken because we're not waiting on him. We're just coming to church. But God wants to give you life. Because he knows, you know, I know, when we leave this place, all kinds of stuff is waiting. Some of you, it's happening right now. They're texting you right now. <laughs> They're texting you right now. But he wants to fill us, amen? He wants to refuel us. So, so, so let this be a practice that we wait on the Lord. Let this be a practice in those times in life where life is being sucked out of you, that you are the one who self-isolates. That you are the one who says, okay, I just had an exam. I need to chill for a minute. I need to let the Lord refresh me and refuel me and retool me so roommates don't talk to me for one hour. I need a quiet time with the Lord. I need to get some strength back. It's not just about taking a nap. It's about allowing the Spirit of the Lord to fill and refuel and teach and instruct and guide and direct. And he just might drop a secret or two while you're at it. Amen? Maybe you've done a project, and it was great. It was good. Guess what? That's when you're most vulnerable. That's why Pastor Fee often says, that's not the time to have a party. Just take the high fives, whatever, and then go sit in your quiet place and allow the Spirit of the Lord to refill you, to refuel you, to retool you so that you're ready for the next thing that God has for you. Amen? We are burnt out because we're not waiting. Come on. This whole thing of spiritual burnout, it's because we're not waiting on God. We are bleeding, and we're coming into the sanctuary bleeding. Life is being sucked out of us, and we're not allowing God to fill us again. That's the kind of God we serve, amen? He wants to fill us. Uh, somebody say, he wants to fill me. 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 Waiting is a ministry of intercession. And, 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 and that's who we are as a church. House of Worship is an intercession church. House of Worship is an intercession church. You'll catch the revelation later when you think about the building. We are an intercession church in terms of waiting on the Lord. And as we wait, actually it's the opposite way. As we pray, we wait. It's not that we pray while we're waiting. We're praying and we're waiting for you. Amen. Can I say this to somebody that God wants? You see, this is not Jumanji. You have not lost so many lives that God doesn't want you. He wants you. He loves you just the way you are. And he wants to fill and retool you and, and, and reveal things to you that will cause you to come into the real place of your manifestation. You haven't even seen success yet until you begin to walk in the manifestations of the Lord. There's one scripture that, uh, oh, since we did grace a couple of months ago, Hebrews 4.16, the Amplified Version, it says, let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners. So those of y'all who are righteous, you're not included in this. It says, God's unmerited favor to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help us in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. Amen. His grace is sufficient. His throne is big enough to handle my issues, and I got plenty of issues. His throne is big enough to handle my failures, and I have plenty of failures. His throne is big enough to handle even your disobediences. If only we would just come and wait on him and say, God, I done lost some life. Give me back my life. Give me back my strength. Give me back my energy. Give me back your calling. He wants to fill us. Amen. 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 The second one I want to touch on, and then we'll round up, is the obedience. The obedience. 
the obedience. You see all throughout that passage in Luke chapter 2. Remember, end game is what? And the child grew. Our theme has been raising a godly seed. We want that which we leave behind to be impacted by the power of God. Amen? Raising a godly seed, the obedience. We, we, we see clearly Joseph and Mary were obedient to all the instructions. I, I can't even imagine how difficult this must have been for Joseph. Can you imagine? I mean, can you imagine? Everybody knows this child isn't yours, quote, unquote. Think about it. And yet he stood in obedience. He did everything God had assigned for them to do. Everything the angel had revealed to him. He walked in obedience. The, and, and Mary, too. Everything we just talked about. 33 days isolation for a male child. Bring the firstborn and dedicate him unto the Lord. They're right there doing that. Name him Jesus. They're right there doing that. Circumcision. They're doing that, too. I want to say to us that in the day of trouble... In the day of trouble, it is your stubborn obedience that will preserve you. In the day of affliction, it is your unwavering dedication to thus saith God that will keep you. For several weeks now, those of you in House of Worship, you've been hearing me say this scripture again and again and again. Luke 22, Simon, Simon, Peter, listen. Satan has asked for you. We are in a years, these last few years have been years that Satan is trying hard to draw anyone he can draw out of the faith to get out of the faith. Satan has asked for you. Satan is looking for you. Sister Mary, all your years of salvation and walking in God, the example you've been, how you've stood through the test of time, uh, Satan don't like that. He has asked for you. Hmm. Hmm. Have you ever asked yourself what would it take? I heard somebody say everybody has a price. What's your price? Because if you don't know your price and you're just pretending, remember Peter after this, I'll follow you anyway. Ah, rooster don't crow. Hmm. <laughs> the Bible says be careful lest you fall. It's our stubborn obediences when, when we stick to the word. And Jesus taught us that. It didn't matter what trick Satan pulled. He's like, the word said, <laughs> the word said, man shall not live by bread alone. He had a ready answer by the word for whatever trick Satan pulled. What's our answer? What's our stubborn dedication that will preserve us in the day of trouble? Because again, we're, let's be real. I, I'm walking there myself. Every day you want to quit. Every day you're tired. Every day you don't feel like coming to church. Come on, Pastor Vasha, let's tell the truth. There are days we don't feel like doing this anymore. But it's our stubborn obediences that will preserve us. Because they will keep us in line. The Bible says his commands are not burdensome. First John. The commands of God are not burdensome. It's just that we don't like them all the time. And sometimes they don't make sense. I just talked to you about 33 days. In the natural mind, it doesn't make sense. Sometimes the things God tells us to do, we don't understand it. And we're in a generation, in a season, where understanding is needed somehow. And, and so it's become a little harder for us to relate to the ways of God. Because God's ways don't always include an explanation. And even when the explanation comes, sometimes then we don't get it. Even Peter, even Peter taught the people and said, you know what, that Paul, <laughs> sometimes he says stuff that <laughs> is hard to understand. Peter walked with Jesus. <laughs> and Peter said, even I don't get it. But I know it's God. I know it's God. I know it's God. We've got to stay true to our obediences. What? is the obedience or the covenant of your family. What, 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 what or, or has COVID made us forget? That would be the price. For many of us, that was the price. That's all it took. A concerted effort by Satan to draw us away from our faith. 
But before we go there, before we can even talk about the obediences of the family, what's my individual obedience? Because I can't punish disobedience till my own obedience is complete. What are my own obediences? What are the things God is requiring of me? Oh, and it's so easy these days. Oh, my gosh, it's so easy to hide our sin. It's so easy to hide what we're kind of, you know, and we know it. It's not even somebody else telling you, don't do. You know in your heart I shouldn't do this, but it's so easy these days. It's so permissive. What are your own obediences? Can I challenge us to enter into the place of your obediences? And when we fall, because we will fall, then we fall on his grace. What are our obediences? We pray, we wait. We pray, we wait. His house for us has been an obedience. God said, do it, so we're doing it until he tells us, stop. Then you stop. It's an obedience. Does it cost you? Oh, yeah. Does it hurt? Oh, yeah. Is it difficult? Oh, yes. But it's an obedience. Your stubborn obediences will preserve you in the hour of difficulty. Anybody have some stubborn obediences, some things you know you've just got to do, but you don't want to. But as you're listening to me, it's just hitting your spirit, and you know you just say it in the quietness of your heart, God, I hear you. God, I hear you. God, I hear you. I'll obey you. I'll obey your voice. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and, and finally, let's talk about the dedication. Because today, I do want us to dedicate ourselves to God afresh. They brought Jesus to be dedicated as the first fruit, as the firstborn. And we all are used to children now being brought to the house of God to be dedicated unto the Lord. It is so vital that we understand that, that the dedication is an act of trust in God. It's saying that I'm separated unto the Lord. This child is separated unto the Lord. The Lord will govern the affairs of this child. The Lord will lead this child. The Lord will protect this child. So we see Jesus was brought for dedication. We see Hannah brought Samuel to the temple. And she didn't just bring him for dedication and take him back. She left him at the altar. Because that was her promise to the Lord. A child truly dedicated unto the Lord. Isaac was so dedicated unto the Lord that Abraham was ready to kill him because he thought that's what God told him to do, and he was ready to do it, believing that if God gave me this child and God says, sacrifice him, God will raise up another child for me. Whoo! That's faith. Stubborn obediences. <laughs> Stubborn adherence to thus saith God. And, and, and I'm thinking about this because... Most of us bring our children when they're little, right? The child doesn't have to consent. <laughs> the child doesn't have to agree. They are brought by a parent who says, this child belongs to God. This child is the property of the Lord. I don't know about you, but some of us, we have situations where our children done rolled off the altar. Yeah, I'm talking about the older ones. They done rolled off. <laughs> Can I remind you that, that you didn't need their consent back then to present them to the Lord. You don't need their consent now to bring them to the altar through prayer. Because let me tell you something. Jesus wasn't really dedicated on that day per se. That day was just a customary day. Mary had already made up her mind. Mary and Joseph had already come into agreement with the angel, had come into agreement with the word of God. And so that act was just, you know, the, the final obedience. The real dedication took place way before that. Same with Samuel. The day he was dedicated was that day Hannah cried at the temple before he was even born. And she said, this child, God, is going to go back to you. That was the day of dedication. Can I suggest to us that some of us have stopped praying for our children? Some of us have stopped praying for our seed. Some of us have stopped praying for our businesses. We've stopped interceding over that idea that God gave you. We've left it alone because it's become too painful. Can I suggest to you in this day of dedication, if we would get back to the place of intercession, back to the place of praying for our children, back to the place of praying for our dreams and our visions that some things are going to begin to manifest. Can somebody say amen to that? Today we're bringing our accomplishments. 
servants. Today we're bringing our children. Today we're bringing our needs. Today we're bringing the gifts of God and we're dedicating them unto the Lord. We're saying, God, here, it belongs to you. Use it to your glory. God, this child belongs to you. I don't care whether they're here or not. And those of you online, you can even start now, even as an act, just put things in that comment section. If you have something that you want to bring before the Lord, let's take a stand today to say that my life belongs to the Lord. My children belong to the Lord. My gifts belong to the Lord. My business belongs to the Lord. Everything I have, it belongs to the Lord. Lord, use it to your glory. That's what dedication is. When we come to the house of God and we say, Lord, I belong to you. My promotions are for you. We come in obedience today. Can I ask us to just stand on our feet wherever we are? wherever we are, because that's really what we are here to do today, is to say, Lord, we belong to you. Lord, we belong to you. Our children belong to you. But before we pray, I just want to, to, I don't know, let's pray first. (laughs) Let's pray first. Let's pray first. So wherever you are, whether you're virtual or here in person, Just begin to raise your hands unto the Lord and dedicate yourself to the Lord. Say to the Lord, Lord, I belong to you. Lord, I give my life to you. You are my God. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. I'm not just here for the sake of being here. God, I'm here because I love you. You are my Father. You are my King. You are my Savior. And I give myself to you. I give my heart to you. I give my life to you. Everything that comes out of me, I want to be filled with your glory. I want to be an expression of your glory. I want to be a manifestation of your glory here on earth. I want what I do to please you. I want what I do to reflect your glory, to reflect your goodness on planet earth. So Lord, I commit myself to you. Lord, I dedicate myself to you. Lord, I arise in this day in the company of the saints and at this altar to say that you are my God. You are my Savior. You are my Lord. You are my King. And I dedicate myself to you. Hallelujah. In this same dimension, I want us to pray dedicating our children, dedicating our our relatives, our family. We have learned that we are priests unto the Lord. Can we stand as priests? the altar and dedicate our family to the Lord, our children. Call them out by name. 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 Intercede for their lives. Dedicate them unto the Lord. It is an act of obedience. It is an act of love unto the Lord. You're saying, God, I love you. God, I love you, and I love you with my whole life, with my family. I bring Jason before you. I bring Jeremy before you. I bring Jesse before you. They're dedicated unto you, Lord. They're dedicated unto you, Lord. Our family shall serve serve you. We will serve you. We will serve you. This family loves you. I bring house of worship before your throne of grace. This church family, we love you. We dedicate ourselves to you. This church family, we love you. We dedicate ourselves to you. We belong to you. We belong to you. We belong to you. Mm. 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 Before we, we, we take the next one, my, I want to share my obedience. You know, I said to you a minute ago that I, I listened to many of the messages in preparation for this. You know, and, and one of the things that I kept looking at, I kept looking at the thing behind me in the background. And I started thinking about, ooh, I should wear yellow. Yellow would really pop against that, wouldn't it, Kalia? Yellow would look real nice. You know, so I, I go into my closet and I'm pulling out outfits to wear for today. And I hear the Holy Spirit going, mm, mm, and then tell the truth. One of them didn't fit. Yeah, <laughs> that happened too. But then the Holy Spirit specifically said to me, and I didn't understand it at that time. He said, wear something you would wear if you were doing a baby dedication. At that point, I didn't even understand where we were going in this gathering. Wear something you would wear in a dedication. If you were bringing your child to the altar, pick something in that closet that you would wear for a dedication. And then I get before the throne of grace and begin to prepare and see where all this is going. So what are we doing here? I'm standing here in my position as a mother of this household. And I'm presenting all of us unto the Lord. 
I'm coming in the anointing of a mother who loves her children, who loves every child of house of worship, near and far, young and old, present and absent. And I dedicate you unto the Lord, unto your purposes in God. I say none of you will fail in the name of Jesus. I say none of you will fail to accomplish destiny in the name of Jesus. Oh, you better say a louder amen than that. You got masks on. Nobody going to get that bug. Come on. We believe today that this house will stand. This house will stand because we're covered. We're covered by the blood in the name of Jesus. We dedicate house of worship to the Lord today. We say we are a church who will be obedient to the call of God. In this place, the word of the Lord will be preached. In this place, we will love one another. In this place, we will declare the goodness of God over one another's lives. In this place, everyone will accomplish destiny. In this place, gifts will come to fruition. No one will lack in this place. In the name of Jesus, in this place, every gift, every gift, as Jesse is our witness, every gift will come to fruition. Every gift will come to fruition. Every gift will come to fruition. In this house shall be no anxiety or depression or fear. In this house shall be boldness. In this house shall be strength. In this house shall be people who accomplish great things to the glory of God. In this house will be sons, sons who manifest, sons who manifest, sons who manifest. We will be the best at what we do. We will know our trade. We will know the law. We will know... We will know finance. We will know banking. We will know nursing. We will know health care. We will know the hair industry. We will know everything that is required of us for our assignment because we are called of God and we are manifesting as the sons of God, as the daughters of God in this time, in this season, in this generation. And if you believe that, can you give you a resounding amen unto the Lord? And now just begin to pray. Just begin to pray and come into agreement with it. Now begin to pray pray and make that declaration. I will walk in my calling. I will walk in my high place. I will walk in my obediences. I will be stubborn in my faith. I will be stubborn in my faith. I will be stubborn in my faith. I'll be stubborn in my obediences. I will be stubborn in my obediences. I will walk in the counsel of the Lord. I will not walk in fear. I will not worry about what other people will say because I only care what God says. I only care what God says. I only care what God says. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't be intimidated by silence. This is the part we really mess up with. We make too much noise in church. Can we wait on God for a minute and not get edgy? Jesus, Spirit of God, fill us right now. Every place where any of us here present or online is running on empty. Spirit of the Lord, can you fuel us again? In any way in which we may have lost lives because we're tired or we're weary or we're overwhelmed or we don't know what to do. Spirit of the Lord, fill us afresh. Fill us afresh. Fill us afresh. Fill us afresh. Rejuvenate us today, O oh God. Rejuvenate us. Rejuvenate us, O oh God, for your glory. Show forth your strength in us today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mm. 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 Father, we thank you. We honor you for your name that is above every name. My Father, can you cover our families today, near and far? Father, those situations, we don't even know what to do. 
But God, you're the God of all wisdom. Can you go ahead of us to take care of our families for us, of our children, our parents, our relatives, God, to protect us from this day of evil? Lord, that we would stand in our obediences. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. You know, one of the obediences that Mary fulfilled was the obedience of the sacrifice. And when you study it, you see that, that what they brought was like the lowest level because that's what they had. And, and the law of God is that we bring sacrifices in commensurate with what we have as a family. Not in commensurate with what we feel like doing or what's safe to do. Oh yeah, I, I understand all of that. But a, a sacrifice that says, God, I love you. And this isn't particularly convenient, but I love you. And I want to offer a sacrifice unto you. So can I challenge us, if you haven't already brought a sacrifice unto the Lord, to bring that sacrifice for those of you who are in person, there are envelopes available. For those of you online, you can go to myhouseofworship.org forward slash giving, or you can go to paypal.me slash myhouseofworship. This is our Benevolence Sunday, so we want to give towards those in need. Okay? I've had situations lately over the last couple of weeks where many different people reaching out in need. There a lot, there's a lot of hardship going on out there, and we want to be a blessing to the people around us. Amen? So if you can give to the Benevolence Offering, please do so. And we also want to be true to our obedience concerning his house. That the Lord who called us, we will obey him till he says stop. And we'll continue to give of ourselves and give of our resources towards his house. Amen. Amen. I'll give a minute for those of you online. And when you've given... Go ahead and type in there, I gave, I gave, I sacrificed, I sacrificed, I sacrificed. Mm. 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 I just want to pray a word of blessing over us before we go forth. And, and for some of you, <laughs> I, I used to call it altar time. Some of us need some extra altar time. Don't be in a hurry. Don't be in a hurry to rush off. Don't let circumstances overwhelm us. You know, I'm, look, I'm waiting to see the people who just come up to this altar. You bring your own Lysol, bring your, bring your own sanitizer, and just do what you need to do in the presence of God. Amen? That's a stubborn obedience. We are saying, God, I need you. God, I need you. This is an unusual day, and I need to tap into the anointing this day. Amen? Amen. We're continuing to give. Listen, the prayer directives for, our, for November will be coming out by later today. Be on the lookout for that. Uh, it's a really wonderful group. Those of you who, uh, uh, you can get it on the WhatsApp groups, but even if you're not on WhatsApp, it's available on the website, myhouseofworship.org. There's a section for prayer, and every month we renew it with uh, some prayer directives, and there are going to be some interesting prayer directives on thanksgiving and testimony so i challenge and encourage you to be on the lookout for that be on the prayer line 6 a.m and 12 midnight every single day and those of you who are watchmen and intercessors i challenge you get on there with the word of god wait on god till you have a word that's one of the things we said this morning wait on god till you have a word and until you can say with with complete certainty thus saith god just pray in the spirit don't, don't try to cock up something and do, do something because you, you just need to lead prayer. No. We need to hear from God. We want to pray the will of God here on earth. Amen? So prayer line, 6 a.m. Those of you who are online virtually, if you can put in the phone number for the prayer line, that would be great. 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and also 12 midnight Eastern Standard Time. Pastor George, you and I had a good time at midnight, right? The Holy Spirit just broke out. Ah, I think we just prayed in the Spirit for an hour. And I never call in on midnight. So when I call in at midnight, you know God is doing something. <laughs> I'm a morning person. So depending on what time of the day you flow, you can join for the 6 a.m. or you can join for the midnight. So Apostle Yemi, I'll let you know right now. I will give you a few minutes to pray, so don't run away. Yeah, don't run away quite yet. But let's raise our hands to the Lord. We bless the name of the Lord. 
We declare the word of the Lord in Isaiah, that the glory, the majesty and splendor of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. For each of us, I declare the blessing of the Lord that allows us to recognize the manifestations of the glory of God. That God would manifest in us on Monday morning. That the glory of God would be seen in us and through us in every decision we make, in our financial decisions, in our legal decisions, in our business decisions, in our relational decisions. Let the glory of God arise through the people of God. Let the glory of God now manifest in and through the people of God in the name of Jesus. Go forth as a son. Go forth as a manifestation of the glory of God. Go forth as one that as you walk up and down the trees, the very ground will testify, that's a child of God, that's a child of God, that's a child of God, that's a child of God. Let the glory of the Lord emanate in and through you. May your family experience the blessings of the Lord because of you. Let the goodness of God begin to flow through your hands. These very hands raised up before the Lord. May these hands now become a vessel a vessel through which the care, love, and concern of Jesus will now manifest on earth as teachers, as leaders in our friendships, as mothers, as fathers, as cousins, whatever dimension we walk through, I bless our hands to go forth that we too will become blessers. We too will walk in a fresh anointing. We too will manifest the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. To our virtual church, we say God bless you. Amen. Can we just raise our hands one more time? Listen, if you need to go, please slip out. One of the things we've always said at House of Worship, no guilt, no guilt, no guilt. If you need to go, God 